Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're looking at Ninja Warriors, which was a 1987 arcade game from Taito, ported to Atari ST by The Sales Curve and Random Access, and published by Virgin Games. It was known in the arcades for its special widescreen uh, effect, which was created by a single monitor in the middle of the cabinet, and then two laid down flat in the cabinet and reflected onto the backdrop with mirrors. And this effect was also used for Taito's Darius and Darius 2 arcade machine, so it was quite an iconic thing for Taito to do at the time. Uh, Ninja Warriors had a reasonable critical reception on its original release. ST Format praised the graphics and particularly some of the large sprites that were in the game. ST Action, meanwhile, contradicted that completely by feeling that it wasn't graphically astounding and criticised the simulation of the original game's widescreen presentation for making the sprites a bit smaller than they could have been. But both publications felt that the game lacked a bit of substance and long-term appeal, although ST Format specifically noted that this was probably more a problem with the coin-up original than the actual port, which they thought was very competent indeed. Anyway, let's go give it a go for ourselves. Let's go play Ninja Warriors. Okay, here we are with the Ninja Warriors from Taito, presented by Sales Curve. And, um... I've forgotten the name of the people who developed it. That'll probably come out in the credits. Export outside Europe and Australia, Australasia prohibited. Random access, there we go. So I'm not sure exactly where sales curve fit in that. Because random access are the ones who ported it. And it was published by Virgin. But it was the sales curve presents, so I don't know. Maybe they sort of had the rights to it or something. I don't know exactly what happened. Anyway, let's press fire and begin. So, one thing you will probably immediately notice in this is that it's it's using less of the Atari's complete screen than you would normally see in a typical game. And that's because it, it's, it's doing its best to emulate the sort of widescreen action of the, Atari, of the uh, arcade original on a 4x3 display and like I say that caused it to have a certain amount of criticism from ST Action in particular who felt that the the sprites could have been bigger and the graphics could have been a bit more detailed if they'd just used the full screen instead but from reading the ST Action review it seems like it seems like the review for ST Action wasn't altogether familiar with the arcade original so I can kind of understand why they'd respond that way if they'd never come across the arcade version. There's the ST Format reviewer. I forget their names, so apologies. Um, the ST Format reviewer seemed much more familiar with the original arcade version. And what he saw as flaws in the sort of general game structure of it. that meant this conversion perhaps wasn't as interesting as it could have been because the original arcade game to them wasn't all that interesting now ninja warriors is it is actually a game i really like i should get in the habit of calling it the ninja warriors shouldn't i because that's what it's actually called um it is a game that i really like but the the version made by natsumi a little bit better called ninja warriors again is significantly better and the switch sort of remake slash remaster slash enhanced version of that that they did a, a year or two back uh, is even better. But actually, surprisingly, this isn't a bad conversion. I mean, the the collision detection is not quite what it could be. So if, if you compare sort of the the use of the kunai to, for example, the, the arcade original or the, the Natsumi version or the recent remake. In this version, if you use the hand-to-hand -hand attacks while you're standing up, you will pretty much always get hit. So that's why I'm crouching for all the attacks, because you seem to have a slightly longer reach when you're doing the crouching attack. And so you take less damage doing that. Whereas in the in the various other versions that are a bit closer to the arcade original... Uh, 
um you, you can stand up and punch people in the face and not have too much difficulty <laughs> which is always nice but i mean the sprites are pretty nice obviously there's some limited color um but the animations are good the scrolling's a little bit jerky but that's nothing unusual for the atari st which generally sucked at scrolling most of the time unless you had a real master of their craft at work oh these things are so hard to kill because you need to use the shuriken ideally but they are um your shuriken are limited as well and if you throw the shuriken while you're standing up they will usually block them so you need to do these crouching ones but because you've only got one fire button on the Atari ST, it uses these sort of contextual controls where if you're close to an enemy, it will do a melee attack. And as you can see, that's not all that useful against these guys. There's one down. Okay, that should make things a little bit easier. And there's the other one. Got no health left, though. Good, good, good. Hello. <laughs> that was unfortunate. We out of credits. We are out of credits. That's unfortunate. Fat Mouse, got each other. Pink Mouse, pleased to meet you. Maximum fat at your service. Fluff capacity. You can call me Fluffy. Polyunsaturated fat. Science fiction. Shakespeare. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Whatever. All right. Let's play again. Like I say, this when you compare this to sort of the the conversions that were on sort of better hardware, like the the Super NES version of Ninja Warriors is very good, and um, as I say, the 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 recent Switch reimagining of it is excellent. But again, that's based on the Natsume version rather than the original Taito version, so. This is actually pretty competent when compared to other Atari ST arcade conversions of games like this. But it's also subject to the same limitations that a lot of games like this tended to be subject to on the Atari ST. So for example, we've got no background music during gameplay. We do have sample sound, which is nice. How do you hit these fuckers? Well, there we go. Dealt with him. No damage. First time. Yeah, so, so there's no music during gameplay. Um, we do have sampled sounds. And actually a reasonable selection of sample towns as well it's not all the same one i mean yes it is the same sound when you hit the enemies but they they've got that scream if you hit with the shuriken rather than with your uh, kunai you've got the explosion sounds you've got certain different enemies make different sounds yeah as I say, if, if you are accustomed to sort of arcade-perfect ports like we get today, because they're emulation rather than ports these days, um, this might not look like them much. But in comparison to other arcade ports of the period, this is actually not a bad one at all. Oh, I've just noticed as well, as you're losing life, your character's actually losing parts of their... Um, sort of humanoid outer is uh, the ninja warriors if you're not familiar you're not actually playing a ninja you're playing a robot but as as you lose health you see a right leg is uh sort of been blown off doesn't have the doesn't have the um the trousers on it anymore and it's just revealing the robotic leg underneath and rather pleasingly if you look when she moves left they actually haven't just mirrored the sprite either. 
So when you move left, you see her left leg in front instead of the right. That's some nice attention to detail, actually. But again, you, you don't often see in a lot of games like this on the Atari ST, just for various reasons. Sometimes laziness, sometimes saving memory. Memory was less of an issue in this one because this game takes advantage of your ST having a megabyte of RAM if you've got it. Um, and it also allows you to use multiple disk drives. So when you load the game up, it actually tells you to put one of the game discs in your second disk drive if you've got one. And as you play, it's almost sort of streaming the level off the disc as you play. So you, you might notice while we're walking along, there are times where you sort of temporarily can't walk any further for a little while. And that's because... That's because the game is sort of streaming more of the level in off the disc as you're moving along. And that's actually a really elegant way of doing it. As you may remember, um, when we looked at Double Dragon 2, Double Dragon 2 actually just paused in the middle of level sometimes to go and load the next area from disc and it was it wasn't super jarring because none of those were particularly long loading breaks or anything like that but it still broke up the flow a little bit whereas this approach sort of keeps the action flowing a lot more nicely and feels a lot more seamless so yeah there's, there's actually some some pretty good tech going on with this one Just the same that certain aspects of the execution could be a little bit better. Like the, the collision detection is probably the main issue with this. Particularly when you're fighting those, those strong sort of short robot dudes. Because they are just nigh impossible to take down without taking any damage yourself. Because you see, they, they jump over your shuriken. And the fact that you automatically strike with a hand-to-hand -hand strike when you're close up rather than just firing the shuriken is a little troublesome. But, well, it is what it is. And what it is, is not bad. So I, I didn't own this one back in the day. I didn't become aware of the Ninja Warriors as a game until relatively recently when my friend Chris enthused about it uh, on an episode of the Murray Gamer podcast when the, um, the Switch version was first announced. And I checked it out then, and I understood what I'd been missing out on, because it's, like I say, the Natsumi version in particular, and the SNES version, and the Switch version are fantastic games. Lovely huge sprites, wonderful animation, brilliant music. Lots to like, for sure. And as I say, while this game is missing a fair amount of what appeals to people from that version, or from those versions, I should say, because they do have their differences, um, it's pretty good. It is as good as can be expected from the platform at the time. And I think if I'd had a copy of this back in the day, I think I would I would have been happy with this. I would have played this quite a bit, I think. As I used to like games like this. I mean, I've always liked beat-em-ups. 
But this is just a little bit different from your usual beat em up in that it's it's not it doesn't have the sort of two and a half D element that most beat em ups have. The fact that it's it's just side scrolling gives it a slightly more of a almost a run and gun feel with the with the use of the shuriken. But it also reminds me of stuff like um Alcatraz, which we looked at a while back. And hostages which was the, the sort of predecessor to Alcatraz, which we haven't looked at on this series yet, but I'm sure we will at some point. Um, uh, firing mortars at me. Very unpleasant. Oh, is there, is there no end to this level? <laughs> Come on, keep going. We can make it if we try. But yeah, like I say, the this, this sort of side-scrolling presentation of sauntering along a street and beating the shit out of people along the way that that reminds me very much of the the opening sequence of alcatraz in particular where you're sort of moving along and you're hiding in doorways and you're jumping out and surprise flamethrower and that sort of thing and in this one you do not have a flamethrower which is disappointing i won't lie but you know you're a ninja ninjas don't need flamethrowers they do not need to resort to such cheap tricks and they can just stab people in the balls repeatedly. Because the crouch attack is the best means of killing people in this game. As we've seen. Oh no, I'm dead. Am I completely dead or have I got another credit? I've got another credit. I think. Yes. Wow, this is the furthest I've ever gotten. Hello? <gasps> is that the end of the level? Alright, it's a boss. I I don't see myself surviving this encounter. But I will do my best. Oh, I did it! I did it! I'm the best. I am the best ninja. Please insert disc 2 in any drive. Press return when ready. I will be right back after I've done just that. Please excuse me. Alright, disc 2 inserted. Let's load. We've got a different backdrop and the same enemies. That's okay though. That's a lot of enemies. A different backdrop's nice, eh? Nice use of varying the colour palette a bit to give this level a very different feel. Just remember, the Atari ST were dealing with just 16 colours at a time. Out of a palette of 512 or 4096, granted, but still just 16 at a time. But that does allow that overall palette that it's able to work with does allow for a bit more flexibility in presenting how things appear. Uh oh Stop that. What is happening? Oh my god, it's a tank. What what the fuck? You can't get me, I've got stabby weapons. Now I'm dead. Okay, there we go. That is an example of the big sprites that ST Format liked very much. Um, and it's also what killed us. So that's nice. Anyway, 
uh, I think we'll leave that there for today because that's given you a good idea of what the Ninja Warriors is all about. Um, like I say, a decent, a decent coin-up conversion. Considering the hardware it was running on and the general standard of arcade conversions at the time. Not bad at all. I, I, I like that a lot more than I was expecting to. As I say, it's no substitute for the arcade original, the SNES version, or the Switch version. But back at the time when this was released, if you had no other option for how to play the Ninja Warriors, this wouldn't have been too bad. Not too bad at all. Anyway, we'll leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.